Hi folks, this is Jake with Tier 3 Tactical. Today we're going to be talking about a quick review of the Surefire Mini Flashlight that I've got mounted on my POF Renegade Plus and 300 Blackout. So this is a home defense pistol. I wanted to keep the build lightweight and I needed a, a good light that was reliable and also wasn't too heavy. And I didn't want something that was huge with like two or three cells that would take up the whole rail here. So I did a little bit of research and I settled on the Surefire um, Mini here because it's got a few um, a few benefits that I really like. One, it comes straight out of the um, packaging with multiple mounts. You can see this is an Imok rail here. And this is the... Um, the m uh, mounting system. It comes out of the package with this Picatinny one, and originally that's how I had it mounted. I had mounted it up top here, um, which is nice because my rail is not one of those like, octagonal rails. It just has Picatinny, or sorry, m slots, 36912, sorry, not 12, that's, that's Picatinny rail, as you can see here. Um, so I can't really mount it in this kind of, um, uh, underneath section here where I really like to have it mounted unless you get the pro version of this surefire mini light uh, which is what I got here now originally it did come with this click tail cap here that works pretty well and uh, as I mentioned in the uh, article version of this review it's good for if you're a little bit more white light AD conscious you really have to kind of uh, push it you're not as likely to accidentally hit that um, but if you're super worried about that, there's probably some better lights out there for you with like a mechanical lockout. Um, this is really good for a couple of reasons. This is why I really like it. In this current setup, I've got it mounted on the, what would probably be the three o'clock position on the M lock. Um, and it's got infinite adjustability by that. I mean, it's got this screw here. Let me zoom in on that so you can see it. You can see if we can see this. You can see that screw there, and you can tighten or loose it, and that allows you to rotate this out. So I want to have this light there. I can tighten it down, leave it there. But I prefer to have it up here. Um, so once I have it set, I just take my screwdriver and simply rotate it in there till it's tight, and then it's going to stay right where I want it, which is nice and close. You can see, I mean, I don't have huge hands, but even that, I can wrap all the way around. So if I'm running this gun, you know, I'm generally a right-handed, but if I switch hands, I can easily still trigger the light like this with a, with a thumb overboard grip that I like to use. Let's talk about the switching systems here. Now, I like to have a little bit of redundancy for that. Most switches, um, especially ones that I was issued in the Marine Corps, uh, were not particularly reliable. They um, just didn't have any way to mount to your handle or your rifle. They'd come off, they'd snack on your gear. It wasn't uh, an optimal solution. So this is what I've chosen to go with for this rifle. I've got a tape switch here that's mounted on the top position and it's momentary for the large portion of the switch. So if I hit this section here, you're gonna get a momentary only. And then if I hit this raised section here, you're gonna get, let's see here, you're gonna get constant on, which is nice. Because if you've ever actually had to use this um, and hold someone at gunpoint or light something up for a long period of time, you you get really tired of holding this down. It doesn't sound like it would be that bad, but it really can be frustrating. Now, I like a little bit of extra redundancy, as I kind of mentioned before. This tail cap switch, which I'm gonna have linked in the article, has an additional one. So if I need to use my offhand, or uh, the wire gets cut or melted or something like that, I can still click it on. I still have the momentary as well. So I have a redundant switch here in case this starts to fail, which I like. Uh, if you don't want that, you can get a simpler uh, tail section here that just has this uh, lead goes into the rear cap and then you have the, the light body and head. But I like having that kind of uh, redundancy. I haven't really used it much, but it's more of a just in case kind of a thing. So um, I've had this light for several months now. I really like it. Um, 
I like it because it's very lightweight. Now this rifle, or should I say pistol, is very lightweight as well. And I was a little worried about adding a bunch of junk to it. That would make it, you know, kind of um, a real heavy boat anchor, so to speak. And I can tell you that this is barely noticeable. It's right around three and a half ounces. This is um, very lightweight. You don't even notice that as well. And I like it because whenever I grab it, it's easy to grab. It's very ergonomic. My hand naturally falls there because I normally I use this Arasaka finger stop. Put that there, then that's just easy to trigger. You know, it's super easy. So that is a quick overview of the light. Um, in terms of its lighting capability, it's got a 500 lumen. I'll kind of get a little bit of an angle here so you can see it. And I'll throw in some indoor and outdoor shots here. As you can see, uh, I think this light is probably best used for applications that are medium range indoors or, you know, medium outdoors. If you're trying to light up something like 100 yards away, it's eh, probably not going to work that well. But it works certainly is, is good enough to PID whatever you need at night. In most distances, people would use it. Otherwise, you're probably going to need something with two cells that's, you know, a thousand lumen plus. And Surefire does make those kind of you know, weapon mounted lights, but uh, that's not what I wanted for this rifle. This is probably going to be an indoor gun, a self-defense gun, or this is the kind of gun you might, you know, keep in a, in a vehicle or something like that. And it needs to keep it compact and simple with a little bit of redundancy in the switching system. And that's exactly what we've got here. Uh, Runtime is listed at one hour and that's sufficient. I mean, this is how you use it, right? You're going to turn it on, search, turn it off, turn it on, idea target, turn it off. And even if you have to hold someone at gunpoint, you know, what are you going to do that for? A couple minutes, maybe 15 minutes at the most when the police get there? You've got plenty of usable uh, battery life. So, uh, very good light. Very happy with it. I would definitely recommend it. Now, the only bad thing about this light that I've really noticed is the price. Um, it is going to run you, as you currently see, around $480. The light itself is around $300. And remember, it only comes with a light body and this tail cap. Uh, if you want a switch like this, you're going to have to pay extra. The simple switch without the extra button here is going to be around... I think that switch is around 130 or something. The extra, the this um, SRO7 switch with uh, the different tail cap here is I think 160, 180, something like that, depending on where you get it. There's links to everything in the um, article, which will be in the description below. So definitely check that out. And it's got a few more of the specifications that I kind of glossed over here. But overall, very happy with this light. This is a great uh, piece of equipment and I expect I'll have no issues with it as I've been a long time user of Surefire and their stuff just works and hey even if it doesn't work they always fix it so I've had good luck with them and I expect I'll have the same with that. If you like this article feel free to like and subscribe.